Hello and welcome to this week's episode of John's Garage. This week we are driving a 2001 Peugeot 406 Coupe, but a 3 litre V6 Coupe. So we are in for a real treat today guys. This is, I've been driving this car for a couple of hours now. It is absolutely gorgeous. It really, this feels more luxurious to me than a lot of the luxurious brands, but I'm not going to go into I'm not going to slate anyone or attack anybody or anything like that. Well, not attack anybody, but say that nice with other cars, but I'm just going to focus on this car. The build quality, I'm really surprised, okay? And I'm surprised in all the right ways. This car is 21 years old. Everything in here works everything is perfect it's over a hundred thousand miles so it has been driven it has been used the dashboard is like new there's no wear on anything no creases on anything the leather is absolutely to die for burgundy leather real leather folks this is this is not the cheap plastic stuff this is not imitation this is the real deal so we have a 3 litre V6 that's putting out 210 horsepower and in this instance it's mated to a 4 speed automatic gearbox. So there's a touch of the 90s about this and of course why wouldn't there be? It is a 90s car. So the 406 Coupe was released in 1997 initially as a 2 litre naturally aspirated 4 cylinder engine putting out 138 horsepower and it also came initially with a 2.9 litre V6 which was putting out 197 horsepower. Now this is a slightly uprated and later version, so this is 210 horsepower. And it's like this is this is proper luxury, folks. Now I want to be clear because some people think coupe, they think ah sports car. This is not a sports car. This is a Grand Tour, and it's exceptionally good at that. Okay, um, it's really comfortable, really solidly built. As I say, I've been driving it a couple of hours. You could stay in this car all day. You could leave your office in Paris at five on a Friday evening, grab a couple of red wines, jump in the car and drive down to Monaco for Saturday night and party it all the way. And this thing would be the perfect partner for doing that in. Beautiful on a motorway, lovely and comfortable on these bumpy roads, country roads that I'm driving at the minute. Now, what I will say is, the three liter engine, the V6 engine in this is a heavy unit and this is front wheel drive. So, if you want to drive it and you know push it on you can do that it is comfortable it will it will take a little bit of messing but i will say that engine is heavy so i'm on kind of undulating roads right now and although the handling is quite taut you do feel that weight up front and i would strongly suggest you don't push it too hard into a turn now if the road surface is good it's nice sweeping turn no problem but just just be mindful of that now I'm going to be really straight with you folks. These cars are an absolute bargain right now, but I've already seen things start to change. Okay, they are already going up in value. They're going up in value because I will be quite honest, of all the coupes released in the 1990s, you have the Calibra, you have various models of E series, or 3 series, sorry, the E36, the E46. You have Lots of other examples of coupes from the 90s. You would have the Honda Prelude, Integra, and so on and so forth. Well, this isn't really an Integra competitor, so we'll maybe leave the Integra out of it. But these are the most beautiful. By far and away, these are the most beautiful. Now, I'm a Toyota fan. I like the Celica, but this is a different class. This really and truly is. The quality of the materials used in here is impressive. It's impressive because, as I say, everything lasts everything is working all the electrics are perfect everything is in great condition the seats are just unbelievable the handling in this is unbelievable and so on and so forth it's actually a gorgeous car once you accept that it's a grand tour and not a sports car now designed by pin and farina but there's a little bit of an interesting quirk in the history of this car so people who like these cars will know that they don't share any panels with the 406 or glass for that matter with the 406 lunar estate there's nothing shared and there's a reason for that other than it's a much style much more stylish looking car but there is a reason for it this car was originally designed for fiat as a fiat coupe now we all know that they went with chris bangles very edgy 
very, very, uh, I'm going to say challenging design for the Fiat Coupe, but I mean that in a good way. Um, I quite like it, but I know it wasn't everybody's taste. So they originally went with that. This was one of the styles which was rejected, it was picked up by Peugeot, rightly so, and they made an absolutely gorgeous car out of it. As I say, it's the condition here is incredible. Now, how did I come by this car? Somebody was having a laugh at me on one of the forums recently, and they were just like, where on earth do you keep finding these cars? Well, I'll tell you, I find them with motoring enthusiasts, people who absolutely love a brand, love a car, who are just, we'll say, enamored by everything with them, and no more so than in the case of this car. This car was actually supplied to me by a garage, with over 50 years experience of dealing with the Peugeot brand. That garage is Slattery's Garage and they're located in Pocon in Nina County Tipperary. And they often take on classics like this, they strip them down, they'll rebuild them, they'll use all original Peugeot parts. And when you start hearing things like that, folks, you know that the brand isn't just something to be sold. They're not just selling cars. They are honestly committed and devoted to the brand. You can see in the picture I have 508. You see in the picture maybe at the start of this, I'm also going to be driving a 508, a 205 Junior that they've restored. Um, the 508's a PSE, by, by, by the way, it's not just a standard 508. They're really committed to the brand. Now, the distributor at the minute, Gowron, is doing an incredible job of rebuilding Peugeot in Ireland. And I do say rebuilding because there was a period there in the early 2000s where I won't comment too much, but let's just say it's best not remembered. Um, to me, a child of the 80s, Peugeot means a huge amount. Peugeot's a rallying legend, it's a racing legend. Um, everyone wants a 205 GTI, 309 GTI, 405 MI16, and all those kind of cars. Like, they are really impressive cars. Peugeot brought that into the 90s, the 406. 206 to a lesser extent, 306 to a much greater extent, brilliant cars, even the 605 saloon, smashing executive saloon, very underrated, but they did kind of lose it. Now, for those of you maybe who are a little bit younger, I'm going to say something and you're not going to believe me. Peugeot was pretty much the Audi of the 1980s. They made solid, dependable, stylish cars, well thought out, good diesel engines, good petrol engines, they had racing pedigree, and they were highly well regarded. They were pretty much borderline executive. Now I know Audi's pushed through into the executive market at this stage, but Peugeot were at that level and it just kind of went off the rails for a little while, but I'm absolutely delighted to say they're back. But cars like this, oh, cars like this is what they should be making again. This is just to die for. As I say, the quality is here. The engineering is here. There is a depth of knowledge. Now, a little bit about that engine that's under the bonnet. That engine was a joint venture. So Peugeot, Citroen, and Renault used this three liter engine for a number of years. It replaced the old PRV unit, which was the 2.9 liter V6, which we shared with Volvo, DeLorean for a brief period. Uh, Peugeot, Citroen, and Renault as well also had a little go at that engine for a little while as well. But this is absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, so what about values, okay? 2001, you're, you're gonna get classic insurance on it, but by God, you're not gonna get classic tax. You're gonna to have to foot the bill of that V6 engine if you want to use it. But these cars are absolute bargains right now, okay? Sub 1500 euros will probably get you road ready car or at the very least a project okay now if it's it's road ready it's probably not great okay but the sky's the limit thereafter what engines what are the pick of the bunch the two liter a very good solid dependable engine suits the nature of the grand tour but it's not a sports car 2.2 liter hdi well that engine has the torque and the power to match the speed hey, fluffy dogs <laughs> has the torque and power to match the speed um, of the looks, we'll say. The 3 litre V6, oh, this is just to die for. It's a cruiser. It's absolutely beautiful to drive. Engine note is quite muted, I will say in it, so you don't particularly hear it, but it's there. You know it's pushing away in the background and you know it's ready to go. Interesting point to note, Slattery's also have a 3 litre V6 manual version of this car. I took the auto out just for something a little bit different today. Um, but they also have a manual one, an original Irish one, which is incredibly rare. Um, but yeah, 
beautiful cars, bargains, folks. Values are going up on these, so I would strongly advise you to grab them while you can. And as I say, for those of you car enthusiasts out there, this is an enthusiast garage, so I'm gonna just refer you on to slattriesgarage.com. Get on there and check out their stock, and if you have any questions, Puget or related or not, get on to the sales staff in there. They're incredibly helpful. And as I say, when you pull up to a garage and you see an original 205 Junior with 40,000 miles, you see a 508 PSE and a Peugeot Coupe 406 V6 parked at the front door, you know you're dealing with an enthusiast garage. So strongly advise you get onto them if you have any particular uh, needs or you wanna look at any of the cars they have. Great staff in there. Anyway, with that, what else is this car got? Well, we have sunroof, we've heated seats, we have cruise control, we've radio stalks here. We've all the bells and whistles that you'd like. Lovely little CD player in the boot. Chrome ring dials on the dashboard give a nice little sporty touch. But other than that, as I say, this car is more about a, a depth of quality than anything else. And it really achieves that. And as I say, the styling is just beautiful. I think the styling right now for Peugeot is really going places they really have some nice cars out there nice aggressive styling as well and of course the feline look to the car um it is beautiful and as i say i don't mind saying child of the 80s Peugeot means something really special to me um in my heart my memories went off the rails but they're back on it and back with a bang and i'm really grateful that slattery's contacted me to take this car out today it's absolutely gorgeous i just can't get over it anyway with that just pulling up the slatteries here again i'm going to jump into another peugeot so thank you all very much folks and we look forward to seeing you again on the channel in the very near future adios bye bye